You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The living legend. Bernard Hopkins. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome yeah. to the show. Thank you, man. Always good to be here, man. Breakfast Club, you know, get it on there. Everybody look like they got crumbs on their lips, so <laughs> I, I, I know y'all got y'all's in. Oh, I still got the personality no matter what went down, but I'm cool. And, uh, let's, let's talk about right that. Let's talk it. about that. Cause you know, no, I'm, we ain't going to talk about it. No, go ahead. I I'm, brought it up. I'm a, you, I'm a huge... Because I, I was style red your mind. I know yeah. how you think. You I'm know a huge mean? boxing fan. like, let me fan. get ahead of this and you bring fought, it up first. You fought in December <laughs> uh, against Joe, just, Joe Smith Jr. He knocked you out the ring. Was that the moment you realized you might have stayed around a little too long? No, I, I think I think no. Um, I just think that um, you know when that in those in that square circle things happen and uh, you know I say it was half and half. Yeah, he did get a punch in, you know, and I trying to use the ropes for my advantage, which you know is is used if you know how to use them to get out of the way or maybe slide out of the way. And and unfortunately, you know, I went through the ropes, but uh, I have no regrets. Um, Everything I do is very calculated mm-hmm. uh, uh, and very detailed, so I have no regrets. Only thing I can say that is, it's not ironic, but it's a, it's a closing, it's a beginning and a closing. If you look at my record in 1988, I lost my first four-round fight as a decision, as a professional, in 1988. All the years, almost three decades in between, up to now, up to December of last year, uh, I end with, with a loss. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think this way. Like, here I am starting off right out of penitentiary, mm-hmm. lose my first fight, come back and humiliate it like a whole 28 years. Cementing my legacy where going to be talked about way after I'm gone. And then on the way out, a L. So L, a lot of success, and an L, where people should be thinking about what the hell are you going to do 52 into the grave. He's, yeah, like I mean, honestly, he's, he's okay. still represent because yeah. I think everybody hear me clear. Mm-hmm. I think I'm coming in here fresh. I think I look younger than 52, yes. going on 53 in Absolutely. about eight more months. In better shape so, than a lot of these so, young kids out here. <laughs> well, I only say kids, men. Right. Yeah, absolutely. See, kids, they got a pass because lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And if they ain't getting no knowledge from the tree at home, which is the parents, then I expect them to be who they're going to be and who they are. That's real. But the old... You're you talking to Mike, talking to Mike, they can't but, hear you. But, but, the, but, but the, the adults mm-hmm. that look the way they look and they can change, that's a different conversation. Now, I couldn't I, really look at Joe Smith Jr. as an L, and I'm going to tell you why. It's one, you're 51. Like, I mean, I know you're Bernard Hopkins, but at the yeah. end of the day, you got to say he's 51. And Father well, Time is undefeated. 52, 52, mm-hmm. 52, yeah. 52, 52 yeah. 52, yeah. Father Time is undefeated. Like, yeah. What made yeah. you box? Why not retire? What made you continue to box? Well, one is because I felt that my my body and my skills was better than the class of fighters that was present. Mm-hmm. Like, the middleweight, the light heavyweight division. Middleweight, I've been shut that down. But the light heavyweight division... At that time, it was just strong big guys that walk around at 215, 230, and they train to get down to 175. If anybody know anything about boxing, when you fight at 175, obviously you walk around heavier than that. So figure these guys walk around 25 pounds heavier. Right. I can't even put on to get 190. I mean, I got to eat probably McDonald's and all <laughs> the other stuff, not get them a free commercial, which I did, but I got to eat junk food to be able to even get to 190. So my body is burning on that 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 petrol that I've been trained off since I was a middleweight. Right. So I just think that, you know, when I came to a decision to myself that I want to do one final one, and we named the promotion Final One, that I wanted to make it an event. Now, in doing this thing, I can go ahead and grab Mo, Joe, and Bill, who nobody knew about, and look like new money, mm-hmm. and like, oh my God, why then why are you going to retire? Look how you look. Well, right. I ain't fighting nobody. Yeah, but yeah. when you, Bernard Hopkins... From my track record, DNA, from the hood to the suburbs to the Hamptons, for the ones that know me when I visit there, they understand that when I take a challenge on, I want to be known as a guy when I take that challenge, I shouldn't have done it. So that's the thing that moved me from personal upbringing. You know, like when the warden told me, that's well documented, you be back. 
because you trying to walk off nine years at 25 years old in Philadelphia mm-hmm. at a crucial time in black America called 1988, and you know what was on the ground? Little vials with little Correct. red top. So you telling me, oh, why did you do this? And they already paid me $7 million? Mm-hmm. And I went to jail for $7? Why will you not fight? Mm. Right. I heard, they got a, mm. I heard they got a mural of you in that prison. Uh, like- yeah. And, 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 and what kept me... But one of the things that kept me on the straight now as far as mic, watching every watching every move that I do and I say and represent is that when you have something plastered on the wall in a, an environment that's right now become privatized mm. business, mm. then anything that I do improper, here come the rollers, baby. It's called painting over, right? So now Majority of the brothers that come through there, that eventually come out from whatever they've done, they can't be inspired by nothing that they see. Like, yo, he walked this block with us. Yeah, they say he was here for the ones that is coming through fresh, the young boys, because they want the 17, 15 year olds now certification. They want time out of it, like guys like him. They want on, on your right hand side, Charlie. <laughs> I mean, they want they want him. Yeah. See, he got time in. It's yeah. like you know, like a job. A little young fresh. Like a job, yeah, like an yeah. intern. Yeah. Right. right. Y'all get him. Mm-hmm. Right. You <laughs> we groom him, man. He, he she got skills. Yeah. He got skills. Hey, keep him around. Go with the coffee, young buck. Absolutely. I know the game go now. Twenty eight years, only twenty nine years in this business, and be able to spit and hire by HBO and then ESP and let him work out the conflict of interest that it won't be none. That's a skill, man. That ain't boxing. That's been in me. Hustle. Right. Like you see the rappers become businessmen. Mm-hmm. As they say, business, man. When you start saying all these things, you're seeing the first boxer in front of you, former, that became and was always a businessman first and an athlete second. And I fought a system that said you couldn't do that. And I proved I could. So I'm always going to win as long as I pick the fights that I can win. And the ones I can't win, you got to prove it to me. I'm not just going to go to sleep because you say go to sleep. And I, I mentioned a minute ago about the warden. What keeps me going and taking challenges is even in the second half of life because numbers never lie. When y'all see the ultimate, when y'all see y'all checks and when y'all get y'all ratings from doing what y'all do, y'all look at those numbers. That's right. And if those numbers ain't right, that's right. You got a problem. That's right. You got to sit down with the, <laughs> with, 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 with Horowski or or, Berz, <laughs> or, or, or Berzenstein Pippen, or Augustine Pippen. or Pippen, whatever his name is, Augustine <laughs> and, 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 and Rodolph. And you got to sit down and you got to say Lahim. And you got to sit down and Mazatov and get that right. So I understand the language. I understand the language. So so with 70, well, 68, maybe 70 fights, don't, don't judge me if I'm off for two or three fights in my career. 30, 29 years of boxing, 1988, do the math, it's 2017, 28, 29 years. Um, I think I'm in good shape. Yeah. And I just got a, yeah. a bill of health from the doctor. Blood work is good, little white cells are a little low, but yeah. they're going to work on that, right? <laughs> no, seriously, Allahi. A little a, a, a low, 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 but everything else is cool. Right? Everything is cool. Did my test, did, you know, colon, all that little stuff. Man, everything's cool. You, man, you got to, you, 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 you're 52. Your blood work look like you're 32. Right. Mm. When they see your blood, that's your DNA. Mm-hmm. When you come and tell a girl who you are, and she come and tell her who you are, when you take that blood, you said you didn't smoke. Well, I stopped. Well, you ain't say that. You said I didn't smoke. You said you didn't drink. Your blood is who you are. All not right, what right. you see out your mouth. Not mm-hmm. your spit. Your blood say what you do and what you don't do. Because that's your DNA. Just like your D's and what you do here. And what I did in the ring. And what I do outside the ring. My goal for the second half of my life, other than my family first. Right now, my family first. They played second for a long time. Right? My daughter going to NYU. I was down here last week. Visit NYU. Visit Cornell. And St. John's. She don't like St. John's, even though it's a big campus. Mm -hmm. 40 minutes from here. Right? Yeah, I was down here. And so I said, where do you want to go? Where's she class? Three-year honor roll. Student. Right? She ain't going to be let Ali boxing. We ain't doing that. Right? She got academics to the roof. Right? Like I said, made it on a row three years in a row. Where you want to go, baby? Right? So, we did all that last week. All Went right. back, rest up, came back here. Now we're doing this. Then L.A. Wednesday. Back Saturday. The hustle never stopped. The hustle never stopped. I'll have no regrets for any choices I made that didn't go my way because I feel I'm ahead of the game. Because I fall back on one thing, y'all, and this is all about motivation to everybody. I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to be a show-off. 
when I'm trying to tell you that every now and then we get a real one that come through in history. Whatever that history lies, you're looking at one right now. And I'm claiming me by my deeds and what I'm going to do next. My goal is, is to outdo what I did as an athlete and as a businessman on this level. Because guys like Magic Johnson expired me. Yeah, we know him for playing basketball, but now he's no more for doing what? Business Cutting business. deals yeah. and That's networking right. and being with the right people that trust and can rely on him to come through, whoever those people are. So my thing is, and no one from boxing, to my from my perspective, maybe y'all can correct me, have done that type of work after they made the transformation from boxing to business. You don't think Floyd Man. is, kind of? Floyd, in what way? He's like, still Because even with his last few deals, like he's been the promoter, right? Like he's been his his own you, promoter. Do you what? think Floyd make his own deals? You think Al Heyman make them? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it's you and Al. Oh, 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 he just he just said something that we gotta look. Give me five seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna need more than that. I'm just like because like. <laughs> people, you know, people. people but but know listen, it's, but, it's but, but listen, listen, but listen, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Well, we, listen. I can preach all day, but if you don't pick that Bible up or that Quran. I might make a mistake. You can't correct me because you ain't reading. You're listening. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between reading and listening. I have no degree of any any school of university, but I have common sense. Mm-hmm. And I use them to the fullest, and I have great instincts. So so when one guy, whoever's doing your business, and most people are looking at the guy, the smart guy that's doing the business, never want to be seen. That's He's true. like a ghost. Mm-hmm. When the last time you seen Al Heyman? When the last time you seen Al Heyman? Mm-hmm. He ain't up blasting around because he want to be... The ghost, right. right? So when you see Floyd not hating on him, as long as it get done, it get done. But I'm saying there's no contest on who's doing it, but I'm saying there's a different mold and cut from a different cloth. When you see me out here hustling, doing this and doing that, promoting this fight coming up with Canelo and Triple G, when you see me come up from there and you spitting and you understand me, when I walk, leave this radio station, nobody talking about, man, what'd he say? I ain't understand it, man, it's messed up. You won't be talking about me like that, you understand, unless you're a hater because you didn't hear that from me. You heard something totally different. And so my thing is not to impress, to inform, and that's what I continue to do. Now, I, know I, this, I, I know think being a, a great businessman is also putting people in place that are necessarily smart at certain things, you know? No, it's like, nothing wrong with that, but, with but, but some people take the credit and they really ain't doing it. Right. They ain't doing no deals. What they're doing is they've been actually the front man and the guy that's doing a deal is doing a deal. But who cares who's doing a deal? But don't don't claim to be a title that you're not. Because when you sit down and you say, okay, read the contract and add this up and add that up and tell me how this going and you don't know, let me get back with you. Oh, wait, we got to get back with you. Sometimes you can't get back to get back to talk about to get back what you're getting for. You got to handle that business right now. I don't know why that made perfect sense, but it did. That made I told sense. you. <laughs> I don't know why it made perfect sense anyway, but it sounds good. <laughs> Now, what do you think about Floyd fighting McGregor? I'm glad you witnessed that. That means that he, not, 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 you know, not disrespecting, but he got, you know, he's, he's informed. He got it. But, but he, he always had it, but he do got it. And I don't even know what the hell I said either. That makes sense. But he got that to let me know that, oh, can he tell me what the hell I said? But now, sorry, Floyd you McGregor, what do you think about that fight? Honest. Does it help or hurt the sport of boxing? It's a show, man. It's entertainment. It hurts. It's a circus. Boxing on a circus. It's a circus, man. It's a, let me tell you what it is, man. It's a, it's a thing. First of all, we have a major fight coming up. And to be able to realize and understand and through the politics of it, he wants the attention to swing that way so it won't deal with a date that he had for almost a couple of years, which was May, right? Cinco de Mayo. And then in September, it's the, bi- the, it's, it's, it's the biggest, y- y- y'all been doing boxing, weekend? yes, Mexican Independence. Yeah. So they're two biggest right. months in boxing. So when you, I'm going, y'all retire, ain't nobody had crack of tears when he retired. Yo, you got your money, you're cool. I salute him. I respect him. Ain't no hating me. Listen, in my heart, I look, man, get off. Matter of fact, I think you got cheated. Us as fighters, man, the real ones are going there, man. You're always supposed to get more good. Look, God bless you. Do what you got to do. Live off your interests and stand on your principles. If you can do that, then 20 years, let's go back to the table and see who got what. See, that's what I look for, longevity, long mm-hmm. money. It's called old money. See, we got new money now, right? New money, new fools. But old money is when you can sit back 30, 40 years when your kids, 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 call a dynasty trust. 
can eat off what you said, like the DuPonts that's in Delaware where I live, they got stuff all in Manhattan, you sit back and say, okay, this is what old money is about. All that new stuff, I don't want to hear about it. God bless you, though. But don't try to fake the game and fake these ignorant people out in the world thinking that you handle all your things, you're doing all your stuff good. No, you just out on front. You know how the guy that say you own the bar, but really the old Shalom, well, Augustine owned the bar and he picked the money up every Sunday. And then and you see the guy with the boss and then he come out, you know, big Roy, Leroy. He comes out, you know, he got his Cadillac, you know, he's a man, <laughs> right? He come out, oh, he got to go around the corner, right? And he got to hand that money over. That's who owned the bar. So transform that philosophy into, hey, man, you think Floyd's a hell of a business, man? It's been set up that way. I haven't seen him do his business. I've seen him talk about his business. But I haven't seen him sit down and sit down and hash out a real hard business deal and come back and say, look, I got not all I wanted, but I got close to what I wanted. Now we can go ahead and sign the papers. But at the end of the day, when you start talking about McGregor and you start talking about Floyd, this is the same thing that I've said way before. Whether he would beat Pacquiao a long time ago or whether he did, when he did beat Pacquiao, because I promoted that for a week, ESPN hired me because they heard my spit. And that led into the HBO, see how doors open. Mm-hmm. And it led into other things. Man, we didn't know he was like that. Personality, wow. So now, credibility. When the business come out and you start recognizing the game of boxing, there's only two people in boxing for longevity on record in history right now in boxing that manage themselves as a professional fighter. George Foreman and Bernard Hopkins. And boxing been around 100 years and only two fighters won the most prestigious awards in boxing called the Manager Award was two fighters in 100 years of boxing. What does that tell you? Mm. So if I'm, if you tell, now, now I'm hitting with this one. If you telling me that Floyd, this businessman out front that they pay, that portray, then why haven't he been honored? They're not hating. They're going to give it to the best. First of all, they want to sell those tables to come. So they want to you know, sell those tables. They won't give you an award to you know, they want you to come so you can get those $1,500 tables. So they ain't going to, I mean, they ain't going to they ain't gonna look past you. But they know who representing, whether you're an advisor, same as a manager. Advisor is a manager. If you got advisor, then a manager, then a consultant, you're paying three people probably 10%. That's 30. Three times 10 is 30. So how smart you are, you got a manager, advisor, and a consultant. So the consultant's going to manage you, should take 10. The advisor going to advise you, should take the 10, and they all get paid. Why do you think I've always been a renegade in the business? Why do you think that I've always been the opposite? Because I wasn't so quick to put my smarts up front. I knew how to play the game without even telling, but telling them now doesn't hurt me because I learned how to hide behind my smarts. Not act like I'm not smart, but I keep my mouth shut. I'm already being judged, prejudged. So I just say, okay, this makes it a little easy for me because now they ain't going to be careful when they walk through that landmine to be blowed up verbally or business-wise. So I learn in certain situations to not put my smarts up front. Y'all heard that spit? Don't always, never always put your smarts up front because you want people to reveal themselves to you. That's one of the 40 laws of power. Appear dumber than your mark. Play a sucker to catch a sucker. Mm. Now, listen, why do you think... You're talking um, that Mason stuff. That's, that, that's, that's real talk. Why do you think that Floyd's advisors and consultants and managers are letting him do this fight? It, money. That's it's it. A lot right? of Big money. payday. Yeah. Right. Big payday. That's money. It, right? You think it's an easy win? They get paid too. Yeah, yeah. If if it's a straight up boxing match, uh, yeah. McGregor can't fight, man. No, he's gonna get washed. He can't box. Yeah. He can fight. Correct myself. He can fight, but he can't box. But who can fight is Canelo. <laughs> and who can fight is Triple J. You see how my brain works? I can't wait for that. See, 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 see I, I like I doing stuff like this, you know, in Philly, you know what I mean, wherever, you know, Eddie F, we, we, Eddie F. I, I remember Eddie F, right? When you, you had the bottle in your hand. I had to go ahead, you know. Eddie F was a wino? Huh? <laughs> baby bottle. Oh! oh. The bottle, the, the, the bottle hand. <laughs> then, he, then he became a wino. Okay. Yeah. Then he yeah. got you, got you. It was after that. But he all right now. He, all, he, he off the Hennessy. Who you, but, got, who you got in the fight? I, I, I've been saying Canelo for years. I have Canelo only if Canelo go just by the script that his trainers and 
the footage of analyzing and taking apart with Triple G is his is, is strength and his weakness. Listen, it's going to have to be a fight where Canelo is going to have to actually understand that he's dealing with a guy that strictly is about power and less skills. Mm-hmm. He come with a determination body attack. And if you notice, Sean, he always hit you on top of the mm-hmm. head. Mm-hmm. That on a skeleton, if you read with the top of the head, controls. It's like a car that loses its control of the tires and the car just shakes and you're out of the place and you're driving, but you can't control it. That's how it knocks your equilibrium. It knocks you cold to another, a hold to another uh, uh, a mindset of surviving and I can't get out of the way because it sort of paralyzes you. So he has to not concentrate on not getting hit. He has to concentrate on offsetting discipline and not getting caught up in his passion to have a shootout with him. If he has a shootout with Triple G, then it will work against him, then for him. He has to actually box Box. his dude. He has to actually fight him on the moments that Triple G is sort of going through his phase on setting him up and can't get him in one spot. If you watch the Trinidad fight in 2001, 9-11, in Madison Square Garden, one thing I've seen the same way I've seen with Triple G, he can't change himself even if he hear this interview. They got a set to hit you. He's always flat-footed. The only time he bounces is to get his rhythm back to come forward. A tractor trailer backs up two or three inches and steamroll coming forward even further. Mm-hmm. That's the mentality. You have to offset that. You never let him set. You got to have him throwing punches to the point where he's trying to get real desperate with that home run shot, and now he gets sloppy, he gets frustrated. I noticed that the last two fights he had. Yeah, do you think he's still as strong as he is, though? Because Danny Jacobs was in there with him. Danny was in there, but Danny's strong, too. Okay. See, everybody, everybody that know Danny and the ones that don't didn't expect Danny to have strength. Danny gained strength for two reasons. A, he's always been a big middleweight, even in the amateurs. It was smart that he paid the fine and he didn't weigh in. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because those 10 pounds is crucial. Right. Cushion. Cushion. You know what I mean? He needed that cushion because he knew that he was going to be in there taking some heat. Absorbing the punches. Yeah. And he absorbed those punches. So what he did, it, which is a brilliant move, some people didn't like it. You got to weigh in. You can't be over 10 pounds for the IBF or they'll fine you or you won't get the title if you win. Know what he said? You, my job is just to beat the man. The, the title is the man. I already paid that money. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's one reason that Danny Jacob put a good fight on. And to me, uh, I don't think he won the fight, but I think he did enough to be able to be respected for the next fight on. And Absolutely. and and and, and that's why he's going to be on a major card really soon. Now, you think Adrian, this fight will go to distance? No, no, it's impossible. No. Not with Canelo and Triple G. No, no somebody, somebody and, 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 and not only that, even further, Charlamagne, this is a fight where n- either one might not be the same because both of them are aggressive and both of them don't have the best defense. Mm-hmm. Like Canelo has a lot more um, style, and I think a lot of that is thanks to Floyd. If you watch Canelo fights right after he fought Floyd Mayweather years later, mm-hmm. You've seen a growth and development. He's he became a, cub. a better boxer. He became a better boxer. Mm-hmm. So when I start seeing him doing this, and I start seeing him boxing, I start seeing him, you know, doing moves like, wait, wait a minute, like, like keep it one hundred. Me- Mexicans don't fight like that. Yeah, they need <laughs> Like I'm like, yeah, hold, yeah, wait yeah. a minute. I'm like, hold, hold. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not being disrespectful. For anybody take that wrong? I, I stand by it. When you see Canelo fight and see the styles, that's like in the hood. When you see him rolling with the shoulders mm-hmm. and all that last fights and then counter punch, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's that's in Urban American gyms, man. That's what we know how to do and, 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 and carry that title for years. But when I see him make those adjustments, Kirkland fight, right? The fight with Amir Khan, right? The fight with Kodo, right? Quality names that he could easily lost if he came or he'd have won but had brutal fights. Bang, 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 bang. But he went in there and started doing this. He's going to have to do all that in some. All those ingredients that he learned, 
He's going to have to do all that with Triple G because he's bringing it. This dude is serious. I'm not hyping it. I'm letting you know this dude's serious. This dude's coming just like an undefeated fighter should with over 80% knockouts. So, listen, it will end in a knockout. I'm going to leave it that way. Okay. Do I want Canelo to win because we promote Canelo? Okay. Hell yeah. You expect me to say that. Right. But I, if you want the Bernard Hopkins, you know, the, the straight up, nothing to do with the promotion, coming in and telling you what's up, whoever get theirs in, win. I've been picking Canelo for years. And I don't know why it's this silly rumor floating But he would have to box him, though. He, he would have to box him in some spots. Not not run, but but keep him moving. Grab him a little bit. You see Andre Ward? See, you got to, like, listen. You got to know when to hold them. <laughs> know when to fold them. Know when to fold them. This guy named George said that record a long time ago before Kenny Rodgers. Oh, here, right yeah, now. He's ass- drunk all the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 my dumb but, ass picked Sergio on Saturday. What? Yeah, I did. I did, too. But listen, I know I did. You see my breakdown on HBO? You know I do the thing called the perfect executioner. If you didn't see it, you can always go back and see it. Like they formed a show around me where they come film prior to fights coming up. They come to Philly, truck and all, and we break it down in in the gym I train in. I pick Sergio too, uh, uh, Sergey, for a decision, not a knockout, because I'm looking at like, okay, they they, want to make up if it's a close fight. Uh, the third one will be even better. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect a stoppage. I ain't expect when Andre came in. Now I know Andre bring that heat, but I'm just thinking like, oh wait a minute! Like from the first fight and in, in, in this fight, Andre Ward man did his thing. Man, you got to take your head off to him, man. The body shots, one but one borderline. Man, the thing was on a belt. Now Adrian Broner, he was here the other day. What do you think of him? I like I like I like Andrew Broner Andrew uh, Broner because you know. It's it's like this, man. Um, not just saying he's a young boy and comment is um state the, the the statement is over with, but I just think, man, that he got to find himself and he got to realize that, you know, eventually nobody's going to care, mm-hmm. and eventually he ain't gonna better do this no more. So whatever he accomplished now and whatever he go through now, he better get rid of it quick, because. One thing about the business of boxing and the people of boxing, they have very short memories when they want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I can't say that for all businesses, maybe y'all can agree, but they have short memories. And there's always someone around that want to fill those shoes or take that seat that we all sit in right now. So that's not a threat. That just, I mean, you took somebody's seat. It was somebody before you. Yeah. So now you come in with problems and you come in with, I'm going to kill myself. And I'm not, you know, there's some serious stuff now. There's some serious allegations. So now when you start talking about, I want to invest as a sponsor or if I'm a network and I want to, you know, do a full fight deal with you, all that stuff plays a role, man. It's called credibility. So when your emotions get in front of you, either graveyard, penitentiary, or you got to apologize on a major network and say you're sorry. And the complexion he got, they ain't going to give him another job in a year and a half. He ain't going to bring him back. I told him that when he was here yesterday. I'm like, you, you, don't, have, you, got, you don't got no more chances. You had zero right Yeah. Now. See, some people, if you know what I mean, can say certain things and come on radio, TV, and say, you know, I'm sorry. I got emotional. And it's okay. We're going to give you, you know, sell your team for a billion dollars and go about We're going to reward you. Go ahead. Get out of the way. We, we ain't getting that pie. We ain't All getting right. that pass, man. So you got to understand. It's triple. Whatever you do is double effect, 10 times effect, matter of fact, than the next person. Yes. And I don't want to make it out of a black and white thing. I'm just making it out of a realistic thing. I, I personally think as far as boxing, like like this is the best class of boxers I've seen in a long time. Why do you feel like the sport still isn't like popping like it used to? Because the inner city do, don't uh, – don't, we don't have the 90s, the, the 80s. We don't produce um, the talent. The Olympics don't produce the talent. The young boys, man, that I talk to, I travel a lot of cities to do ESPN because they come on every Friday. So we here, we here, here, here. And a lot of the fighters, man, of, of, of you know, you know African-American, black neighborhoods, man, St. Louis, all over, they ain't got the patience, man. They looking at it like, you know, the Olympics is rigged. 
you know, I got to throw a million punches. They they count them with a pen or whatever. And the patience and the error that we live in, um, you can't say here's a Mercedes, man. If it ain't a Bentley or Rolls Royce or Bugatti, man, they looking at you talking about like, hold up, I'm trying to play ball. So when you have a lack of 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 boxers coming from the ranks of inner city, which always been the hotbed for talent, mm-hmm. then you have a situation where it only dictate the era in the streets where people don't want to be like, where the fighters don't want to be like putting their time in, mm-hmm. going to the gym. If they don't win a gold medal, if they go to the Olympics, it's politics, they say. Sometimes, most of the time it is, I agree. But they don't have the patience for that, man. They want, same in New York, you know, the same thing here, the same thing in Philly. Man, they want instant gratification. Some of it is they choosing, and some of it is just the, the, the patience of waiting for your time. You've been banging this here for years, man. People think you just got in your position because you said you want to be here. I remember Eddie F. <laughs> doing the sports, doing the, you know, just commercials, sound bites, boom, and he get right off. Now, I mean, for years, 10 years, I guess 10 plus years we've been on each other. I seen the progress. I seen the, the, the you know, the, the process, and he trusted the process. Mm-hmm. What do you think about, like, Javante Davis or Devin a, Haney? They look pretty good. For really them. good talent, but it's, it, but they only chose it's only chosen few. Mm-hmm. And, but it's not, it's not like, it, I'm not expecting that things do change. But the hunger in us is not there no more in a black urban community of fighters. It's not there no more. Why do you think you see the Mexicans come over mm-hmm. and the Latin people come over, Latin American people come over from Russia, from Kakistan, from here, from there? It's all mixed up now. Every Most of the ones that hold the titles now are not Americans. You know that, right? They, they always act like it's not profitable. Like when you go to Vegas, like a black fighter has to fight a Mexican fighter. In and order to get those, attendance. Or somebody from, like, yeah, but you know, or you, But you know what the disrespect is, and a lot of it is true? They figure black folks don't spend money on tickets. We don't buy tickets. And we don't support our own fighters. 90% are right. And that's what uh, I mean. Why doesn't uh, the general uh, public let, care about let, let, let me, let me, well, the, why do they don't? Or yeah, they why do? they don't? Because I think they think that this corrupt. I think they, they think the matches are mismatched. Mm. And they, 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 it's too high. I mean, people are trying to, like, find a way with a whole bunch of stuff that's going on that we ain't going to get into. You understand? Mm-hmm. And then you're saying, look, here's $200 for tickets for a fight or 5000 I mean, where these people get these monies at? Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. only cutting out. You're cutting out. The, the, you're put, cutting in the halves and the halves not. And they're looking at it like, man, I ain't, I'm cool. Right. So that's why you haven't seen anything except when a Pacquiao and a Floyd – or something, McGregor and 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 Floyd. They're trying to use those big names. They bring the UFC crowd, which is a huge market, and then they try to bring the boxing. You know what I mean? And they like, I believe the UFC market will always beat the boxing market because the level of it's more entertaining. Yes, and that fight is for like the McGregor Mayweather is more for the casual fan. Like you don't got to be a fan of boxing to watch that. Like Triple G, those numbers. Triple they G Canelo was a boxer's. Boxers Boxing fans. I also think they was heroes too. You know, as a kid, you know, you looked at boxers as your heroes. Like you can name George Foreman, Evander Holyfield, Bernard Hopkins. You can name Mike Tyson. You were those were the guys that you wanted to see. Now, R. B. Think about it for the African American community. How many are there besides Floyd? Really, at this age, that's true. Can't now, think of any. Now the thing, the thing in Florida, the fight. Say McGregor is McGregor's. Look, this is a a chance where he get a chance now to grab another audience. That's what he's trying to do. Mm-hmm. So I understand the hustle. Don't get me wrong. The marketing of it. I understand the marketing of it. But if y'all saying what you did, ask me, if this a boxing match, is this something that will go down in history? Hey, what if McGregor beats Floyd, hit him with something crazy, <laughs> knocks him out? What did that do? Now is he, is he one of the pound for pound best in the world? This fight does nothing for a sport that I respect and love. Right. Personally, it's disrespectful, man. I wouldn't fight Mr. T at 50. <laughs> so, 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 I fight him at home, but I ain't gonna fight him in the ring. <laughs> I jump on his ass in a minute. But for, to go through the process of promoting it, like I fight Mr. T 
and let people know why I'm fighting Mr. T, that's what I should do. If I'm going to fight Mr. T, yo, this is what I'm going to do, y'all. I know it ain't a real boxing match, but I'm going to fight Mr. T because it's entertainment. Well, he can't say that, though. But I would no, say it because say I be, but I should. I know why he should say that and why I would say it. I would say it because I got to let people understand, yo, they ready to pay me $200 million. I'm ready to fight Mr. T. I'm the best hero in our sport, right? I'm representing mm -hmm. as the hero of our sport. And Mr. T, you know, Mr. T, you know, A-team and all that crap. So now he got his legacy. So us two legacies coming together, and we're going to duke it out. Not and Mr. Real. T going to box for six months to get ready for the fight. Now, if it's done like that, I can say, okay, now that makes sense. It do. That's but what Rocky from, did when he fought Hulk Hogan. He said the same yes, thing he in did. the movie. Yes, he did. <laughs> he said, now, <laughs> now, check this out. Now, check this out. Now, even if you disagree, you can understand that they clearly you. set up. They set up to say, look, y'all, this is not a boxing match. But it's going to be a match between two legends who represented their... Two champs in their own field. Yes, going to come together. Y'all can buy it, or y'all can't. Y'all don't have to buy it, but we're going to promote this like we're going to go in there and hurt each other. This ain't no this ain't no free show. Remember Floyd for the wrestling guy. What's his name? Big Show. Big, Big Show. Big, Big Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Big at, Show. At the, yeah, at the WWE, right? Or WWE. Right. Mm -hmm. This is an upgraded Big Show. Yeah, that's real. This is an upgraded big show. Think about it. It's just for boxing. You're right. This is for boxing. Mm -hmm. Because you got to think right now, like, yo, like, people might say, okay, well, it ain't for the money. Well, if you spend a lot, you need a lot. Grandma Hummy saw always telling me that. If you spend a lot, you need a lot. So I'm not checking a man's pocket. That's his money. But if you have a reputation. You have a image. You believe Full Oil needs this fight. You have to continue to represent your name. You got to be money Anybody Mayweather. that has money in their name and their mother <laughs> didn't give it to them, always got to <laughs> represent money. That's the streets, man. <laughs> Even if I'm broke, I got to come in a party like I'm cool chain on anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I got a pocket full of money. I take the 10, the 20, the 100 and put it on top of 51s. Right? So you think, you and, never, he, and when I flip it out, I yeah. have the other hundred. So you think they're all as hundred, but it's all ones in the middle. So you think Floyd needs this fight? He I think no, no. I think that if you spend a lot, you want to make up what you spun and some, and you would take risk and you would do things that people that don't know would scratch their head. Because you got to understand, when you spend money, I'm going to say it again, when you spend money, you got to make money. And so when you watch him what you spend, and it's yours to spend, mm -hmm. and you gotta look at it and say, where can I make a big buck? I'm gonna put it together and let y'all do your stuff. And you gotta sit back. This is my my thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking street and I'm thinking corporate. I'm on both ends. I'm analyzing, because we all do this. This is normal. So I'm sitting back saying, oh, wait a minute. If he spends a lot, right? Then he need to make a lot. Ten million dollars ain't gonna scratch a nut. Ten to laugh at that, right? Twenty, come on. One hundred fifty, maybe two hundred. Now you got my attention. So now I got to make up. Is that's a, a good hustler? You don't. You, you 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 a good hustler thinks that way. That's real. You you, you can't yeah. listen. If you if you spend a hundred, you got to make two. That's right. That's how I thought when I was out there. You got to go here, man, and like, yo, if I but it, I got to I got to make that back. Everything I spend that dollar, I got to put five dollars back in that can. Because if you keep taking things off the table, I don't care how much money you got. That table gonna be empty. If they keep cleaning this table off and nobody adding nothing on this table, this whole That's thing real. be gone. Absolutely. Now you you're not gonna fight no more, right? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just making sure. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Listen, I'm I'm done, man. I'm cool. I waited so late, man, I couldn't come in if I tried. They wouldn't give me license. Yeah. <laughs> and I signed a paper with Oscar. Yeah, I signed, and anybody asked me to do it. I done. I signed a paper that I'm done. Right. I told you, man, when I'm, I took myself and pushed myself to the max that when I do stop, when I'm finished, that I'll be so old that I can't come back. You feel like you got it all out. I got it all out, man. Yeah. I got it all out. And that's the, you know what, I mean, that, that is so... What you just said, 
when you feel that you got it all out, you know how you want to talk to somebody, you just wanted to, you know, when you see them, you, know, you get a little bit out and you know you got more to say? That's how, like, I feel in my career. Mm. Like, I have no stone having been on, I haven't, I, no stone having been unturned, overturned by me or turned over or looked at. I've done everything, I accomplished everything in the ring, and now I'm taking this energy that I must continue to use and place it in the right positions and right situations to be able to now not only help others in fitness, eat to live, not to die. I got that from the final call. Elijah Nation Muhammad. Is, yeah. Nation yes, is not eat to live, not to die. My 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 security, all of them, Akbar Muhammad, all them guys come from the first 74 years old, look like they're about 60, mm -hmm. tall, in shape. I learned all this, man, from the nation. I learned all this from a lot of people like miss me. So I want to give that knowledge back on a different, even the business of boxing. When I told guys, I said, man, live off the interest, man, and stand on your principle. Oh, that was that was cool over here. OJ, I said, nah. You know what that mean? But uh, the interest is stuff that you make off of. I said, nah, nah, you stand on your principle. That doesn't mean money. That means everything. You feel that you need to stand on something, you're going to lose a few dollars, depending on your situation, then you stand on that. And I said, if you really believe what you believe, you stand on that knowing that you ain't going to get that opportunity now. But if you continue to beat these dudes, it'll come back. It'll come back ten times fold. But you gotta stand on something, and then you gotta live off your interest once you stand on and achieve it. That interest is the interest off your principle, and your principle is your lifeline, man. The first thing I did when I got my money, man, the real money I got after expenses low, expenses low, taxes, now is mine. I make sure. That I will live off the interest if the bottom fall out. If I don't win another fight, that I will be in a place that I ain't spent a lot of money and I got to have a lot of up oh, over, overhead on. Mm -hmm. See, we grab stuff because we can afford it now, but then we look back and say, why these bills keep coming every month? Mm -hmm. Well, fool, it's called expenses. Mm -hmm. You got a 25,000 acre house, 20,000 square, square foot. Don't you understand it's three hundred thousand dollars coming out of your account. It's coming somewhere, mm -hmm. or foreclosures mm -hmm. coming. So now you grab something, right? You got expenses on that. It's the same with a car. Remember, profits high, but expenses got to be low for profits to be high. I ain't go to Wharton School to get this. Damn right. <laughs> I learned this from fools. I learned this from smart people, and in between, and I just sit back and listen. I said, "Yo, man, what is this dude talking about? He live off the interest." Hey, he bought a bond. He get tax free interest every year. Not a lot. It's like two and a half percent at that time. It was one and a half. One and a half now is really nothing. But still, money is safe, and you just having a lifestyle that can bear the interest that you're living off. Of. So, what if a guy is making two hundred thousand a year, but he got a lifestyle of four hundred thousand? Nope. He in trouble. Oh Lord, have mercy. And a lot of people living like yeah. that. So these guys from 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 these. Schools, you know, these, these these smart guys down in Wall Street a couple blocks from here, they sit back and look at a guy like Bernard Hopkins or a fighter because they don't know, no. Mm -hmm. They don't know. Or he's a fighter. Come in the spot that they in. You know, you come in, uh, get invited to here, invited to there. Mr. Hopkins was coming there. People invite me, no. But so when he get there, who that? Oh, that's, that's Bernard Hopkins. He was the champ for me years. He's the oldest fighter. They mm -hmm. just talking. So they, think they don't know me, but he's a fighter. So I'm mad they put their... They put this stuff up on the table first. Well, I ain't doing it. I'm from Harvard. I'm from Iron Hopkins. I'm a, uh, okay. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm about eye contact. Yeah. So I, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, nonverbals. I ain't looking at them any way for they can expect that I'm thinking something different of them. Mm -hmm. I just give them eye contact. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some keep those eye contact because a lot of people can't really look in your eye mm -hmm. if they're hiding something or if they're about something. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I immediately, my kids the same way. My five-year-old would shake your hand, mm -hmm. and he'll look at you. Say, How you doing, little kid? Absolutely. I'm doing fine. He'll look. He won't look up. He won't look down. He won't look up. He won't look shy. He'll look right in your face. Mm -hmm. That there is a sign of not only power but confidence. And that's how I know uh, like everybody was trying to say that this last fight tarnished your legacy. And I'm like, that's how I know y'all got short-term memory. You got you short -term. don't know the history of. But Bernard most people Hopkins. do. That's the sad thing about it. Most people do. Most people. But do. you know what? But we need those people though. Don't you understand, like, 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 we ain't make these rules up, man. Well, how good can be recognized if bad didn't exist? Right. Like, like, I, I, I think everything that I wasn't thinking before or thinking them before, 
based on if we didn't have the opposite of one, how can I know the truth or not? How can I know the choices to make? If we had one way to look, then a word choice would never be in the dictionary. Mm. Do you feel like people give you props as a business person? I don't care. I saw Forbes had you valued at like $40 million. Well, I wish I had the 40. <laughs> <laughs> they got me at 40 million. But you you know, that that's cool. But see, like I another thing about 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 yo, let me let me borrow a couple of dollars, I'll get back to you. Hey, I put inches on it. I got bills. I got okay, bills. I understand. <laughs> no, like four, like that I, I seen that too. That was in a recent one, I think. Yeah. Right. But uh the like I try to figure out like how they really get these 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 stats, like, cause they don't like my all my business people is in New York. My my bank has signature. I can tell y'all where it's at, cause y'all go in there and knock that off, y'all good. Right? You know signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signature, big, right? One, one of the biggest, right? Yeah. One of the biggest. So mm-hmm. mine's that signature. And 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 all my big stuff is there, is here in New York, not in Delaware, but the, the corporate state is in Delaware. That's where you you you, you so go. Mm, Delaware. Been this is ninety eight. Mm-hmm. I said Philly, didn't I? I just, I just sleep there, but I Delaware, yeah, where is Delaware? Since ninety eight, <laughs> right? So, so how do they back to that thought? Forbes or even these Google joints? I go on places, man, girls. And I'm with a couple of you know people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I ain't got <laughs> name drop, but I want a couple of people that yeah. made me look like I'm homeless, and they looking. Cause I'm coming in, you know the girls, you know they yeah, have, so I used to be yeah. out there, you know I know the girls, you know what I mean. Yeah. Celebrity net ooh, worth. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Now, like, how do they? Like they don't pay my taxes. <laughs> to know what I'm actually worth, you have to be my guy, Jacob. You have to be. They all shaloms. You have to be my guys. <laughs> they, I said they all shaloms. You have to be my account, my CPA. Mm-hmm. Right. They got 300 people. They were a firm outside of New York, right over Jersey, right across the bridge. What are you talking about? So when I look at Forbes and I look at at, 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 at social media and I look at it, they say, oh, 60, 40, uh, 50. Like, the person that know your DNA of your taxes and what you're worth between your properties, and I got over 50 of them, in areas that was hood, now they're the yuppie neighborhoods. And that means good. New York got them too. Brooklyn ain't Brooklyn no more. The skateboards. I hired 15 geeks three months ago. They stay by the computer every day. Geeks. Right? I love the geeks. They the most popular. Listen, geeks, I love y'all. Play this. Don't cut this one out. You got to love I love the geeks. Because they the every day skateboard over here, and they rolling. You want some need? No, McDonald's, and they on that door. So I understand the process. But I'm trying to figure out, which I shouldn't be, how can somebody know what somebody's worth unless they do their taxes? Let them talk, man. True. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know how they get those numbers. I don't know if people You can't them. publicly get nobody tax stuff. Nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. If that was the case, we wouldn't be asking Donald Trump to turn his over. <laughs> he ain't turned his over yet. <laughs> Never. So so what I'm saying is this, man. It's all they it's all keep you blinded, man. Mm-hmm. It's all to keep you blind. You got a little picture in that, man. You got a little picture in that. I'm looking at it right there. See that word right there? Oh, Hampton. Wow. See that? Yeah. When I sit out there in West Hamptons with the old money at, West Hamptons. When I sit out there twice a year every summer with my guy, and I sit there and I look around, and you looking at Calvin Klein house, and you looking at Polo house, and you looking at these people. Oh, money, when you sit down, I'm sitting there, and I got my feet up. They listening because I told them I'd be on the show. And I'm sitting back and I'm like, hold up, man. I got a lot to do. Not that I want it. Not that uh, 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 I'm not satisfied and grateful. I'm the love. None of that. What I'm saying is that my kid's five years old and I got a 17-year-old. Them five-year-old, 17 straight. I did the same thing I did with me with her. She lived off her interest. NYU would be paid by that. But them, them five-year-olds... The third, I'm a junior. My legacy is with the boy who never gives the name up. The woman, the girl do. He's married. She take on her husband's name. But the legacy is with the prince who will become the king. But not in the ring. 
And that's why he and all of them always in the best schools. Germantown Academy, one of the best in the country. In Look it up. Outside of Philly, Montgomery County. Oh, my best friend went there. Bernard Hopkins, y'all. Ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, September Bernard 16th. Hopkins. Yes. Triple G, Canelo Alvarez. You for us <laughs> and dropping them gems and them knowledge. Have to, man. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Have to. And I, I respect uh, the show and um, I respect everybody that respect fights that you should pay and, and the ones that they shouldn't pay. But Canelo and Triple G, it's going to be a fight that people are going to see. Mm-hmm. That is worth the seventy, sixty dollars that they're going to pay, sixty-five, seventy dollars that they're going to pay to see the fight. And I'm just glad that fights are starting to be made by everybody because we now we are dealing with everybody, each side. And Danny Jacob have nothing to be ashamed of, um, and I know he's not afraid to fight anybody. And look forward to seeing him soon. Um, I can't talk too much about it, but it's going to be probably something said. About him fighting next, coming up. He didn't get beat up in that fight. He did well. He didn't win, but that's mostly everything you win. But big ups to Danny Jacobs, man. I mentioned him early, and I want to give him some props, man. While I'm here in New York, in this in this city, to let him know, man. He uh, he's he's he got the warrior heart, man. And he's still a true champion. All right. Well, there you have it, Bernard Hopkins. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 